Hey friend, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to jump in and share some really fun stenciling techniques using the Sedona Scene Maker stencil. I love this one. I feel like it didn't get enough love when it first got released. So I wanted to show some really awesome techniques using it and bringing in some other products to create some beautiful cards. Everything I use will be listed and linked down below so you can find it super easily and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So the Sedona Scene Maker stencil is a two-piece layering stencil set. On one of the stencils, you get the stencil and mask for some really cool mountains and three of the cacti you could stencil. And on the other stencil set, you have the stencil and mask for a scene of cacti. And then you also have the sun or moon and some birds to fly around. You also get all the masks and there's an example on the back of the packaging as to sort of what you can create with this beautiful stencil. This was sort of inspired by the first scene maker stencil that I created. And this one is so incredibly versatile. So if you have it, you can sort of mix them together to make it even more versatile and create some stunning scenes. You have stars, a sun, a moon, birds, clouds, a cloud edge, or this could be waves as well. You've got grass, some different kinds of mountains, and then a little slope here. So let's create some cards using these stencils. Let's start off by creating the most basic scene for this stencil first, and then we can step it up a notch. So I'm gonna start off by using a little bit of Shooting Star Yellow ink, and I'm just going to lay down lots of color on the surface. It doesn't need to be perfect, I'm just going in using the domed foam blending tools. And what I really love about these is they apply tons of color really quickly. So we can get a nice, bold, saturated, and intense background super quick and easily. So I'll just blend this halfway up on our card here and kind of fade it out a little bit. Then we'll bring in a little bit of Prom Queen. I'm gonna tap off some to the side and I'll just go in here and create a strip down our card, blending this into the yellow ink. You're just gonna wanna go down into the yellow. And as you overlap these, since they're translucent dye-based inks, we're gonna create new colors. So it's gonna create kind of an orange color in between. And you can go back and forth to really help blend and smooth them together as well. And you can see that there's no harsh lines. And then next I'm gonna go in using a little bit of no diving ink. And this one is blue, so when it blends together with that pink, that's why we brought it up a little bit higher, it creates a really gorgeous purple. So these three colors create tons of colors in between to really give you a nice nighttime sky blended look. And then lastly, for an even darker blue at the top, I'm gonna go in using some Midnight Snack just to darken that up a little bit. Now you could leave it super smooth and blended like this, but I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of water and spray it down on the surface, just a tiny bit to create almost star-like looking backgrounds. It just adds a little bit of texture and interest. So you can see how it reacts beautifully there. But if you don't wanna do this, you can totally skip that step. All right, for these next techniques, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of mint tape. I'm going to loop this, place it on the back of my cardstock, just because we want to secure the cardstock to the surface so that it doesn't move while we stencil. So first I'm gonna grab this stencil that has the mountains on it and I'm gonna bring them up to about two thirds the way up with the top of the mountain. And then I'll use a little bit of mint tape to secure it in place. And I love using mint tape because I know it's not gonna rip my cardstock, but it still holds things down really nicely. Then I'll go in using a little bit of brown ink called the Weeping Willow. And I'm using brown here instead of black because I wanna make it just softer than black because it makes it look like it's in the distance but a little bit further out than having it really stark black. So that's why I really like this brown color and it sort of matches how the mountains and the desert would look as well. All right, that's looking great. So then we can lift this stencil right off the surface and check out those beautiful mountains. Now, if you started with white cardstock and you wanted the mountains to be a certain color and then you wanted to mask it off and blend the sky, that's why we've included this mask. So you can sort of mask that off and blend things. But here, since we're using darker colors, it just covers it up nicely. Then I'll go in using the cacti stencil and I can lay this right down onto the surface. And then again, I'll go in using a little bit of mint tape to hold it down onto my surface. For this, since it's the front image and I want it to stand out, I'm gonna use a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. This is super jet black and it's a pigment ink, so it's really going to cover up the rest of the background. Now these have some little pieces in here and we don't want to ruin those. So when I do this blending, instead of going in a harsh circular motion like we were just doing earlier, I'm gonna to wanna to kind of dab it onto the surface and sort of twist if you want to too, to add that color down and it's gonna give you a really great, nice jet black color. We just don't want to kind of rub this stencil and risk ruining it. So that's why I'm doing some sort of pouncing method. And that's why I said to make the mountains a little bit lighter because this black is gonna really stand out and the brown is gonna look like it's a little bit more off into the distance, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'll just continue to pounce all the way down on my background until everything is nice and covered below the stencil using this black ink. 
and then we can lift it right off the surface and check out that jet black silhouette that we have. It's just gorgeous. Now this background looks great, but if we want to add anything like a sun into the sky, this is where your masks are going to come in handy. So I'm just going to go over top of these mountains and mask it off really quick and easily with this stencil. So that's all nice and covered. And then we'll go in with the other stencil that has this sort of sun or moon on it. And we can place it right into these mountains to make it look like it's poking out from behind the mountains. And I'll go in using a little bit of mint tape to hold it down. Now you could use like a dark red to create sort of a blood moon, but here I'm gonna go in using slippery and wet to create a nice yellow, bright, bold sun. So here I'm just going to take a little bit of that lunar paste, a little bit goes a long way, and I'll sort of use my acrylic block as a palette. I'm gonna spread it down pretty thin onto the acrylic block. We don't need too much of the paste. And then I'll go in using a domed foam blending tool again to dip it right into here. It's going to sort of coat the sponge. We don't want too much on there, just enough to coat it and then we'll go in here and sort of blend that through. And now it does a pretty good job of covering it, but if we wait a couple of seconds, it'll sort of start drying since we have applied it so thin, and then we can dip back into the rest of our lunar paste and blend on more layers to really thicken it and make sure that color doesn't show through. Then you wanna remove this blending foam and take it underneath the sink to wash it out. That way it doesn't dry and harden in here. And then we can lift this off the surface. You'll see that nice sun. And then when we remove the mountains, it looks like it's behind the mountains just beautifully there. So that's why we included these masks along in the set. For the sentiment, I'm gonna use the Must Have Sentiments Hot Foil Plate and Die Set. I love this one because it hot foils and die cuts six sentiments at once, so you get a ton of them to use on your card projects. It's such a time saver, which I love. I'll pop the sentiment up on some foam tape, and I'm using this massive 3M foam tape roll. It's like bigger than my head. I'll link it down below, but I love it because it's an investment up front, but in the long run, you're saving money on a big roll. And then I'll pop this down, kind of overlapping with the sun there, and I love it because that gold of the sun sort of matches the gold foiling on the house. I love sentiment really nicely. So here's a look at that finished card. I love how simple it is just to create a colored background. You could also use a piece of patterned paper and then ink blend on top of that scene. It's really easy to do, but it makes such a bold and beautiful impact on your card. So this is how the stencil was really designed to work, but I'm gonna share several different ideas using the stencil that are a little bit different. For this first idea, I wanna create sort of an ombre monochrome looking card, which I think is gonna be modern and very stunning. So I'm gonna do this inside of the stamp wheel to hold down my paper and stencils, which I think will be really nice. So I'm gonna go in using first the mountain stencil. And when it comes to my Simon Hurley Create stencils, you want to put the glossy side facing the sticky side of this mat, because there's sort of a coating on the back here on the mat side that we don't want to rip off. And instead of using it right in the center like this, I'm gonna move it a little bit to the left, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to sort of place it down on the edges of the stamp wheel to hold and stick it in place. And that sticky mat really grips it nicely. And then I'll use a little bit of tape in areas where we don't want there to be ink. So here I'm gonna do sort of a monochrome blue background and I'm gonna use my Altenew large blending brush to cover a large surface area at once. Now with these brushes, I have one per color family. So I just want to make sure to wipe it off of any excess color I might have used in the past. This is kind of a darker blue that I was using before. So I'll just go in and wipe it off until I get kind of a clean color. And then I'll bring in a little bit of breakup blue, which is my lightest blue color that I'm gonna use on this background. Again, the furthest away sort of mountain, we want to be the lightest color. So I'm just really easily using some light pressure and blending this into here. And it's going down super smooth and beautifully. I love how my inks blend on this dark white cardstock. They do a really great job. And I also love this brush because it covers so much area at once. It makes making this card super quick and you could probably make a whole set of them in different rainbow colors. All right, so once that's all blended, I'm going to lift off the stencil and check out that beautiful sharp edge of the mountain. And again, I love the stamp wheel too because it makes it nice and sticky without having to use any tape. Okay, so then I'm gonna go in and instead of using it on this area, I'm gonna move over to this mountain, which is gonna sort of fill in some of the other spaces and also give us a different looking mountain. So once we've got it lined up, we can again place it down onto the surface here, stick it into the stamp wheel. And then next I'm gonna use a little bit of no diving, which is my mid-tone blue color. Again, I'm going in using the same blending brush because we've got one for each color family. So since we're sticking with the blues, I'm gonna go in using no diving. And again, just blend it starting from the top and lightly blend down all the way onto our surface. These blending brushes have really been my go-to lately. When it comes to doing large surface areas like this, it really makes it super easy to cover and it's a big time saver. All right, so once we're done with that, we can then lift off our stencil again, 
peel it off the stamp wheel. And there we have our second blended mountain. I love how this is looking with that sort of ombre look. Now we could stop the mountains here, but another thing you could do to get a different looking mountain is flip the stencil and then you've got it in a completely different design. So that's what I'm gonna do here to create one more mountain kind of in between the other ones here. So lastly, for the darkest blue, I'm gonna go in using some Midnight Snack. I'll ink up that same blending brush and then I'm gonna go in and blend down using that Midnight Snack ink to create this really nice dark and rich color at the bottom. And when we lift off that stencil, check out that really great rich dark blue color we have going on there. Okay, definitely clean off your stencil before you flip it over though because we've got some extra stray ink that we didn't necessarily want right there. To get rid of some of it in the white area, I'm gonna go in using my Tambow Mono Sand Eraser and I'm just going to gently sand the surface of my cardstock here. It's not gonna get off huge ink blobs, but if there's just a little bit of ink on the surface like there is here, we can just gently sand the surface to remove some of that excess color we got going on there and check it out. It's definitely back to white. There's still some ink down into these areas, but that doesn't matter as much. It looks a lot cleaner now, because I was not about to start it over right now. And then to clean the ink off of my stamp wheel, I'm just gonna spray it down with some water, and we can go in with a rag and wipe it off super easily. Now, if your inks usually stain, they'll probably stain the stamp wheel just a little bit, but my inks don't stain, so they come off really easily. Now, last but certainly not least, for this last layer with the cacti, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of lunar paste to add some beautiful shine to the card. So I'm just going to line up the cacti in sort of the empty area peeking through the mountains there, I like how that looks right there. And then I'll go in again using some mint tape to really easily hold down the stencil. And then there's the birds and the sun, so we just want to take a little bit of mint tape over there and make sure to mask that off before we do any blending. I'm gonna use a little bit of Midnight Snack, which is the last and darkest color that we added onto the surface. I love that they coordinate with my colors, so they're really easy to match with the projects you're creating. So I'll spread some kind of thin onto an acrylic block as a palette again. And then I'll go in using the domed foam blending foam. And again, I just want a really thin coverage of this. I don't want it to be textured. If you wanted it to be textured, you can go in using a palette knife, but by applying it with the sponge like this, it dries super quickly and it gives you that shine, but it doesn't give you tons of texture. So I'll just kind of rub it gently through the stencil. Again, this is a little bit more of a delicate one, so I'm not gonna be too rough with it. And then for this bottom area, we can go in nice circular motions. Because we've applied it so thin, it's a little bit more see-through than it usually would be. So I'm gonna go back in, and once I've given this a couple of seconds to start setting, it dries really quickly. And then we can go in with a second layer here, just to make it a little bit more opaque. And once that layer is done, we can lift off our stencil. Now I'm gonna use the Thinking of You sentiment that I've also foiled from the Must Have Sentiment set. It really rings true to its name. These are Must Have Sentiments. And I'm either thinking about putting it up here or like kind of down in this area because there's not a lot going on right here. And I think this is probably the spot I'm gonna go. So I'll just use my tweezers to sort of put that in place. And I love how that beautifully foiled gold sentiment stands out against all the blue we used on this card. So here's a closer look at this. I love that blue shine on the bottom and this really great sort of monochrome ombre card. It's a really great modern and beautiful way to use the stencil that's super unique and creates such a great impact. This was super easy to make too, so I could see making several of these in different sort of color schemes with different sentiments on it, putting it together as sort of a gift box and giving it out to a friend because they're great notes cards to send. Next I wanted to do sort of a bonus card because along with these stencils there's also a collection of stamps and some background stamps that go really well with this. So this succulent set is just beautiful. I love all the different outlined succulents in here and they're nice and large to fill a card. And they've got some great sentiments that can go along with that stencil or used along with this stamp set. And also this Moroccan tile background stamp is just so beautiful too and it gives off the same vibe as the cacti and succulents and the beautiful desert as well. So let's make a card with these. So with this background stamp, we're gonna do a little bit of stamp kissing and I'm gonna use a solid stamp. So I love these paint swatches. They're a really great sort of color blocking method to build a background beautifully. And for this technique, I wanna go in using this large paint swatch that's gonna cover a card really nicely. And I love all the details in this stamp. It makes it a little bit irregular, but you get the perfect swatch every time you stamp. For this technique, you're gonna need a light and a dark ink. Here I use both the blues, or you could do different colors like oranges and reds to do a little bit more contrast. And you're gonna start off using the lighter color. So in this case, I'm using Breakup Blue and ink up your larger, more solid stamp. So here I'm using this paint swatch and I'm going to ink it up. And then I'm gonna go in using a little bit of No Diving, which is that darker ink. And I'm going to go on the Moroccan Tile background stamp and ink up enough to cover the paint swatch stamp. 
I love this dark, rich blue color. And then once that's all inked up, we can take our paint swatch and we're going to press it into the Moroccan tile background stamp, giving it a little bit of pressure, wiggle it around just a little bit, and that's going to beautifully transfer that darker color ink onto our stamped design. And then we can go in onto our white cardstock and stamp this down really nice and easily, giving it some good pressure. And that rubber stamp is going to stamp beautifully and make it this really great textured background. And what I love about this is you have that lighter blue in the background, sort of forming the edge of that paint swatch really nicely. And then that darker blue to create that beautiful pattern on top of our solid stamp. And like I said, you could go with a darker color for the base color too and do a little bit more contrasting, but I like this look for the background we're doing today. And then we're able to go in using our succulent stamp set. I think I'm gonna use this guy right up here. So I'll ink these up using some VersaFine Clear Nocturne Black ink. And then we'll stamp it down to get a really great jet black impression. Now, if you know me, you know I love my clear heat embossing powder, especially when I use this black ink because it takes a little bit longer to dry, so this is gonna help set the color into place. Then I'll heat set it until it's nice and clear and shiny. Now, inside the set, I designed it so that there's solid images to stamp inside of the succulents for quick and easy coloring, but if you want more of a watercolor look, you could totally do that as well, which is what I'm gonna do today. So I'm going in using several different greens and different colors and swiping them onto my craft sheet to create a nice palette of color that we can use for our water coloring. Then I'll go in using a bit of water on my paintbrush and I'm just going to fill the succulents in with water to get the cardstock ready to take the ink. If you struggle with blending your color together or you think that it sinks too fast into the cardstock, try adding water to the cardstock first. This is gonna make it so that instead of going right into the cardstock, the color sort of sits on top and has a little bit more time to blend. Once you've added the water, then we can go in with our first color and you'll see this creates such a nice wash of color on top of the surface rather than sinking right into the surface and not being able to blend. That's like my number one tip for super smooth and beautiful watercoloring is starting out with a layer of water first. To add some shading, I'm going back into that same color using less water on my brush and we can add it to sort of one side of the cactus to give more of a shaded effect. So this is great to just use one color, get that same exact tone of color but just more saturated and darker. And this is why I love using just a regular paintbrush instead of a water brush, because you can really control how much water you're adding to get that shading. I'll do the same thing for the next succulent, start off by adding a layer of water down onto the surface, and then we can go in with our first lighter wash of color. So here I'm using Fake Plant, which has a little bit more of a cool tone to the color. I love to vary the different greens because there's a ton of different types and colors of plants in nature. So it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And then I'll blend this all over top of the surface, adding in some shading using less water with that color. And I love how beautiful those look. Then I'll add my color. I'm starting off with a light wash of Weeping Willow. And then again, go in with more color, less water to add our shading. And lastly, I'll shade in this face using the color Shady with lots of water at first, and then I'll use less water to add some darker gray to one end. And check out those beautiful watercolored and shaded images. I love them and that wonderful shading we got with the watercolor inks. If you're not super confident with coloring using ink pads, I hope that those little tips that I shared make it really helpful and a little bit easier to dive into coloring with your inks. Now I love that you can buy coordinating dies with this set because there's tons of details in these that I wouldn't want to cut out by hand. So I'll pull out the different succulents I want and to cut them out, I'm just going to line them and center them up over top of those images and then I can hold them in place using a little bit of mint tape so they don't shift. Same thing here, I'll line it up and then tape it down to hold it in place. And now I'll run this right through my die cutting machine to cut it all out. And these images pop out super easily and again, I love that mint tape so it won't rip anything and check out these beautiful images. All right, I'm planning out the card layout. This is where I want the cacti. I've trimmed down this base so there's a little bit less white and added it onto a blue piece of cardstock. And there's a word die that comes along in the succulents coordinating die set that says hugs, which I think is just so fun and kind of funny for succulents. So I'm going to add this down right onto the card, line it up, and then I'm going to place down some mint tape so it doesn't move and we'll run it through our die cutting machine. And this creates a great window in the card that will be matted on top of this blue. You can then see the blue hugs underneath. Then I'm gonna add this taller cacti in the background and I'm gonna adhere it flat down onto the card. And then I'll take this succulent and I'm going to pop it up on some foam tape to make it stand up and give it some dimension. And there's that finished card. I love that paint swatch background with the Moroccan tile kind of stamped into it. It's such a fun technique to get a unique look and texture on your card. And then finishing it off with those succulents is just adorable. And I love how this one came together. 
If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know which card is your favorite. Also down there, remember, is a full supplies list to everything I used, listed, and linked. And using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and spending time with me today, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.